Hey, Raph and everybody else. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the fascia here and you could do it on two spots, but the, the primary rotation is around the wrist and, and you're going to rotate against tension. If you go <clears throat> this way on, it'll be different on both wrists. You just get more tension there. What that tension does is it pulls it into the, uh, into the shoulder socket. So when one shoulder is uh, dislocating, it's because it's too tight inside. So, so what we're doing is, is torquing the fascia. We're distracting the arm a little bit, not too much. And you can actually accelerate it by going here if you want. And we want to do a very slow, long arc. And you'll see I'm at his range of motion. So I'm going to move over the range of motion. Jay, I'm going to get you to roll your body forward against me. And so this is passive, but Jay can actually move his whole body right there. You see that transaction? Okay, now Jay, I want you to roll your body forward. So Jay's rolling against me. One of the ways I can do it is I can actually help and assist. I'm not pulling very hard. I'm only giving about 20 pounds of pressure. Uh, there it goes. And by doing so, all the way around, what it's doing is it's rotating on the inside of the shoulder. Now you could do the same action for shoulders and for legs. Again, we're back at that spot. So watch this, I'm gonna actually push it and rotate it over. So watch, put the camera right here. I'm gonna go a little bit more aggressive on Jason here. Right there. So technically I just dislocated the shoulder and rolled it back in, but he doesn't feel pain because the distraction of the fascia pulls it out. Remember the muscles? The, the bones aren't structured, so when you pull it out, it has more range of motion, okay? So again, two ways to do this is you as a practitioner, you, you slightly twist and you distract. The second way to do this is have the person now roll. So Jason, I want you to roll around. Bring up your knees. And you create a fixed kind of position. Have the person roll if they're capable of that. And again, you can do this by attaching the fascia. We're gonna show you um, with like a piece of neoprene, like a weight strap and attaching it to a pole. And then you can do this yourself. It's self-administered as well. And the same thing is going to apply to the hips. When we do the hips, I'm gonna get you to roll way over. Okay, so, so same thing, I'm gonna rotate the hip. But when the hip, I'm gonna go right to a point of, of pressing and what I'm doing here is I'm going to use my foot just to get leverage. I still want a distraction. So I'm pulling out and just letting it breathe, rotating in here. And I can lift it up like this. And again, to that person's tolerance. Because I'm pulling, I've got slight rotation and distraction. And then, right there. That's gonna pull the troll canter right up. That's a, another way for the, for the hip. Okay, there is, there is another way for the hip on lay on your back. This is a, an old school way for us. What we're gonna do is we're going to constrict the foot. Remember, we're taking each joint and constricting it. So I push into it. So you see here as I push into it, it's locking up his hip. I give the, the heel a rotation, ex, uh, internal. And then what I do is, is I, I hold this and I turn the femur almost like I'm, like I'm, uh, like I, they turn it right to the max and hold it there. There's no pain usually. And then slowly we can go like this. And you can rotate the top of the knee and then you can slowly hold and move around. I'm going faster. You probably want to hold in each spot, but you see what I'm doing is this is for external and quads right there. Okay. So that's, that's another way to do it. Um, there, there is another way that we're going to work on here. And again, it's, this is all distraction. So 
want you to focus on what happens in the hip. So watch, in, this will be internal fascia. Sometimes I have to, if I'm working by myself, I have to do it like this. What I'm doing is I'm rotating, I'm putting my hand, my elbow down, locking it here so I got a grip. And I'm pulling, and then what I'm doing is I'm rotating. Now I want you to turn against me, Jason, watch the hip. As he turns against me, so yeah, turn against me, harder. So you're, you're lifting your, your glute. Now carefully watch what happens with the hip as we do this. The leg starts to distract and gets longer. And the hip, you're gonna see, and see I've got this hold, so it's not really, I got distraction, but this is my lock right here. And you're gonna see the hip start to push a little bit harder, Jay. And just, there it goes. Now watch the hip start to drop. So what we're doing is we're taking the internal rotation and the internal tightness around here and by externally rotating the femur and distracting it, we're pulling it out. Now, when you have a hip and shoulder issue, th this leg would be, uh, uh, would be tighter into the hip and this shoulder would be tighter in this way. And so, so initially, you might want to take the shoulder that is, that's tight like this and the hip that is, the, this shoulder is tight, this hip is out. So you might want to take uh, the opposite of the injury and straighten it out. Think about the X pattern. And if this is in and this is out, you want to pull, you want to pull, uh, you might want to pull this out, this leg out and this out, and it evens out the body in the center. The other thing you can do is uh, if you have assistance, you can take and push the fascia up right here over the hip and pushing towards the rib cage. Now, if you have assistance, somebody will pull and distract this. If you don't, you just push in and then you turn slightly and then you'll wait and you'll feel it open up inside the hip. Uh, these are the most powerful ways to do it. Now, the other part, uh, which we're going to show you, uh, I'll send a separate video for this one.